This is a painting of a scene in Whitby. I used a simple trick of overlaying complementary colours onto existing colours to make areas of this painting uh, look more vibrant. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Let's get into it. This painting is in Procreate. Somebody asked me in the comments, would I do an oil painting in Procreate? So I thought, okay, I will use oil painting brushes. I did use the cotton wool brush to uh, put the sky in. I really like that. Um, <clears throat> I don't finish the sky with the cotton wool brush, but I did start uh, using that. And I also used it to sort of scumble in some colors over the whole of the canvas, which is pretty much what I do with any um, oil painting. And then I thought, okay, let's do this using oil brushes. So I use the turpentine brush. And I also, for a little while, used my own oil brush, but I felt it was a bit too smooth, a bit too slick. It's all right for faces, but not so much for landscapes. So I went with the default oil brush that comes with Procreate. So pretty much the old painting you can do with brushes. Well, you can do it all with brushes that ship with Procreate. That's the cotton wool brush, uh, which I, I, I overpaint pretty much a lot of it in, in a while. The turpentine brush and the oil brush. And I begin by getting the old uh, canvas co covered with uh, color, as you can see. And then I start using the turpentine brush. As I said, I, I was using my own brush to start with, but that was not, um, I wasn't feeling it. It was just too smooth. So, but that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is the use of color uh, that I um, used in this painting. And that is using complementary colors, but not in a way you would normally possibly use them. You might <clears throat> do it in a very obvious way where you are painting say I don't know a a red flower and you put a green background to it that's a complementary color or um, a blue sky and an orange beach because that's complementary colors so wait where, where you got these very obvious um two complementary colors working side uh, working within a painting and the old paintings based on those two uh, colors really this is different where you can see i've got lots of colors in there i've got blues reds greens browns and um at this point it's looking pretty drab so i'm going to use complementary colors in very localized areas um, over the whole of the painting to try and make it uh, a little bit more vibrant because at this point i think that just looks gray and dull and it started pretty much on the roof i'm working on now uh, i put these windows oh i cheated then did you see that i i copied and pasted the window but hey i'm over painting it so you won't see that it's the same hopefully uh, anyway i was just saying i was kind of struggling with the roof and thinking how much detail do i put in this uh, uh, what colors am i going to use and then um that funny enough there's a new feature in art rage 6 where you can um highlight complementary colors on the color wheel which i've spoken to in uh, a couple of videos ago that i didn't get the idea from that i actually painted this picture before art rage 6 came out and i just had this idea that uh when i was painting in the style of Cezanne, i was uh, doing this technique where you overlay complementary colors so i decide that um i am going to do that but as you can see now it, i haven't started yet it's still looking fairly drab and i'm i was sort of thinking this is going to be one of them paintings that looks really lifeless when i've finished it if i'm not careful what am i going to do what am i going to do and 
the solution I came up with was this complementary colours. And any um, digital painting application that allows you to select colours from a colour wheel with uh, the hue around the edge of the, the colour wheel in a circle, you can do this with. You don't have to uh, do it in Procreate. You can do it in ArtRage, I know, I know that. Uh, I think you can do it in Corel Painter, and I, I guess there's a lot of apps you can do it in. You wouldn't be able to do it in, say, Teyasui Sketches. It's not going to work for that. And I was kind of keeping you in suspense because I was way into the painting before I started uh, this uh, overlaying the complementary colours. So here we are. I think I am about to get into that maybe not just yet i'm still sort of just sketching in the shapes i think i'm sort of working with different colors but i'm not sort of selecting complementaries at the minute and then another thing i did with this painting which i don't normally do i painted the shadows directly onto the object i didn't create a multiply layer and do it that way uh, I did it with um, actually painting on the one layer. And here you can see I'm now going in with complementary colours. So basically what I did, uh, I mean it's going really quick, but the colour wheel comes up. Whatever colour was opposite on the colour that I'd got selected, I chose that and um, started uh, painting in with that. I start messing around, putting a bit of detail in. I didn't like that. But you can see we've got this sort of oranges and greens and you can see there um I what I do I select the color uh, by holding the cursor on the uh, color of say the roof to select the color then go to the color wheel and pick the color opposite so that's the complementary color and then I'm I start painting those colors into the um whatever area I'm working on so the complementary colors on this roof to the left are different to the ones the uh, a, a right of it but you can see straight away it's really adding a vibrancy to that roof which was looking really flat and boring previously so i'm now going to work through the all of this painting all of it and um put these complementary colors in sometimes they're very subtle and they're just sort of pastels of of the um main color and then other times they're quite vibrant and sharp. So I'm still sort of resolving the composition while I'm doing this as well. Uh, I sort of painted areas. I do use uh, layers in this. I use, uh, I, I think, to get those steps in. Uh, not the steps, the end rails a little bit later on. And you can see I'm there. I'm painting complementary colors straight into there as well. And at this point, I'm I'm getting excited now because I've gone from this, oh, this is a boring painting, the colour's looking so dreary, what am I going to do, to I've got a solution and I'm excited about it and it's working. And you can see I'm painting complementary colours into that building, into the wall. And it's just making it, for me, it's making it pop. Very subtle there, look. And then I overpaint them again and blend them together and merge them. So it's just adding a real soft, delicate look to it. But it's becoming vibrant and lively. To me, anyway. You might uh, think otherwise. I, hopefully not. You see there, look, I'm choosing the colours to paint those shadows in. I, think, I, I don't know why I didn't go with the multiply uh technique with this one where i create a layer and set the mode to multiply and then overpaint the shadow i felt that um this one was something that i just wanted to do where i painted it in so i guess i could add complementary colors into the shadows as well that may have got a bit muted um if i'd have done the multiply technique so even though i'm using grays a lot of grays in this just by adding that complementary gray into it it's sort of just making it vibrate a little bit and 
uh, adding something that sort of stimulates you uh, to more so than when it was just this boring drab grey thing. Again, I'm putting complementaries into these grasses. I'm not using, you notice I've sort of, I'm not using a grass colour as such. I'm sort of uh, varying it quite a bit from, it's much more blue than the actual grasses. That was just a, a design choice I made. You could use regular grass colour. I just felt that, I think, if I'd have put the sort of the yellows in there, it would have really, um, made that corner stand out and I wanted it to blend in with the rest of the painting so I kept the colors to a more muted blue green getting those and railings in there again I'm going to go in with these complementary colors into it so I've sort of got a purple base so what's complementary to purple yellow I guess we're going to see some yellows going in there I'm hoping so. Yeah, there we are. So complementary colours again. All of the paintings just got complementary colours. I even go, uh, because I'd painted this C on a separate layer, I was able to go back and put that beach in. But you can see now I'm putting complementary colours, just a touch of complementary colours into the C as well, just to tie that in. So this is pretty very different to what I, I normally do now I felt the sky just with the cotton wool looked like a different painting it was it was just um, you could have cut it with a pair of scissors so I decided to overpaint that and also get some complementary colors into the sky as well and I used the I think it was the uh, turpentine brush just to make the brush strokes more um, match. I, I wanted them to be uniform over the all of the painting. I get it signed, so at that point I was thinking it, it was finished. I'm thinking oh, it's missing something. Should I put a figure in? Do you think I should paint a, a person? Uh, but at this point I'm still sort of fiddling, putting a few highlights in, messing about with that um lighthouse i wasn't happy it was a little bit too big so i just adjusted that slightly working on the sky just sharpening the horizon of the sky up a little bit and then um here we go i'm thinking i've got to put somebody in. i need a person on these steps taking a breather because there was like 101 steps uh, to this which took you up to um an old ruined castle monastery or something which was the actual inspiration for Bran stoker um when he wrote the uh, novel dracula so uh, they've got all these um dracula things going off up there uh sort of you know souvenirs and stuff like that and this old ruin i may even do a, a painting of it so that was quite cool that you're climbing these steps up to dracula's castle the real dracula's castle i know it was the novels based in transylvania or somewhere but it got his inspiration from whitby so anyway back to the painting i, I got a bit carried away there let's get some complimentary colors into this guy's shirt so they're clearly not in the photograph at all but i wanted them um, i wanted to get that complimentary effect going over the all of the painting so that included the guy as well he looks uh, suitably out of breath i think i need i needed to size him up he was a tiny little bit small and then i, I love the way the shadow sort of went down the steps so i needed to get that in that's important don't forget to put your shadows in in, in people because sometimes they can look like they're floating I struggled with the hands a bit considering there's not a lot to it they're just sort of clinging onto this railing and it's not you know it's just a, a an indication of a figure I, because i painted this on a separate layer i was able to use the eraser to chisel bits away and um tweak things and move arms and stuff like that so there we go that's it 
um, that is my painting of Whitby using complementary colours to make a dreary painting look a bit more lively. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.